Hello everybody and welcome to the 2D Animation Masterclass with Jeff Wilson. Here we are week four. It, I can't believe it. We're already here. Week four. It's been an amazing workshop. Uh, just, uh, you know, going through what's possible and uh, learning about the, the animation techniques and, and what we can do in, uh, in the Procreate software. And, and really, I, I'm always more and more amazed with what, uh, what the tools that are available within the software and, and what Jeff's, uh, uh, you know, showing us these, these like hidden features that, uh, uh, you know, can be can be used in Procreate. Um, at the end, I also have some uh, answers. I think there are some questions about sound um, and and that kind of stuff. So we'll, uh, I'll just uh, can touch on that a little bit towards the end as well. But yeah, thanks for joining us again. Uh, this is uh, the Creative Space Workshop 2D Animation Masterclass Week Four. I just want to remind everyone that you can rewatch these um, right here. So if you have this event bright, uh, you can go back to weeks one, two, and three. So if you're joining us for the first week, don't worry. You can rewatch all of this and then. Uh, follow along. In terms of, uh, just want to thank all of our partners in this project. So we have the uh, Canada Council for the Arts, we have the library partners, Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library. We do have iPads available, so you can get the iPad Pro at the uh, Blue Mountains Public Library, and we have some iPads available at the Collingwood Public Library, all loaded with the Procreate software. In terms of the software, just uh, uh, Jeff is, uh, is our animation uh, instructor, and uh, he comes with a, a wealth of knowledge, so I'm really uh, glad that we're, we're learning all this and continuing. And at the end, I'll share his, uh, his email too, so you can uh, send any kind of questions, or if you've been working on stuff, you can send it over his way to get some uh, feedback on what you've been working on too. The software is the Procreate software, so again, if you haven't downloaded it, uh, you can purchase it. It's about $15 Canadian, to get on the iPad about $10 uh, for the iPhone. So both can, can use it. And it's, uh, again, everything that Jeff's doing you can use on Procreate or other similar software as well is out there. So uh, you can always uh, explore other options too, but it's the same concepts. And that's the, the best thing is the concepts are what we talk about here. So let's, uh, let's without any further ado, uh, let me uh, pass it over to Jeff. Here we go, Jeff. Okay, well, thank you again, Tom. And welcome back everybody. I've got a, my, my, uh... COVID haircut now, I'm ready to go. <laughs> feel about 20 pounds lighter and uh, uh, it feels feels really good to be able to do that. So um, today, uh, this is going to be kind of uh, the finishing touches of, of uh, 2D animation. And um, basically I'm gonna touch, uh, you know, you can't really finish anything without, uh, without going back to the start somewhat. So I'm going to talk about the, um, what we're doing basically is classical animation, 2D animation is what I consider a classical animation. Uh, so what we're uh, really doing is marrying the two, digital and classical animation into, um, into so it, it, I kind of have to start at the start to show you uh, a little bit of what, where it came from. Uh, and there is a movement now uh, by a lot of people uh, right now to return to the look of classical animation, but the thrift and labor saving advantages of, of digital. And I'm, and, and uh, I just want to explain why what we're doing digitally is you and me a lot of money doing it this way. It's incredible. And, and we can uh, have a lot of the advantage of doing uh, maybe making expenditures in, in other areas, but still saving huge, huge money other ways. Um, so I'm going to start with um, talking about classical animation. I do have a, um, a picture I want to show you uh, later once we get out of it. I'd like to show you first, uh, this is what animation was done on for, for many years, uh, these uh, animation sheets. And you'll note the, the holes in the bottom of the sheet or the top of the sheet, depending on how you did it. You could put it uh, on an animation disc, which I'll show you in a, in a very short while in my demonstration. So this is about the space that you would Disney would use to uh, do their animation. Disney and Warner Brothers and all the great animation companies, um, they would um, fit it on a sheet like that. And the using the peg holes to fit to a peg um, bar, which would be on an animation disc, uh, which was the tool of the animator that, and, and, a, and a table and a light underneath it. So they could see, uh, you know, they could see other drawings underneath that sheet. Uh, that was the tools used for many, many decades uh, from, I think, 1914. And I'll talk about that here. Uh, the first animated stars were uh, comic strip stars, basically moving comics. The, the, the stars were Crazy Cat, Mutton Jeff, Little Nemo and Sl Slumberland. Uh, if you check out on YouTube, it's a very, very uh, 
very easily accessible video uh, by a movie by Windsor McKay about uh, called D Gertie the Dinosaur. It was a 1914 uh, animation done entirely in black and white, entirely line drawings, like a comic strip you would see in, in the newspapers in the day, uh, which were very popular. Uh, which aren't anymore, maybe, but uh, they were at the time. Uh, the, it was the first film to be produced the way uh, films became produced for many years. It was uh, at one point, it was one person would would do several drawings or scratch them onto negatives, and uh, painstaking it would be like weeks and months and decades, even in some cases. Uh, a gentleman named Windsor McKay, who was a ca cartoonist, uh, started the animation technique and basically. Um, would it would be like an introduction to live shows. So uh, it was the first film, though, to be so um, complex that they required in-betweeners. An in-betweener is a, is a term uh, meaning a person that does drawings uh, between the key drawings. We'll discuss that a little later, too. Um, and, of course, uh, it made more famous and successful by uh, Warner Brothers, animation department and Walt Disney, of course, who uh, died in 1966, but Disney continues and the legacy continues today. So I am going to now take my camera here and I'll switch it over to my screen and uh, we'll get a bat at the animation desk here and we will zoom in a bit. Here now, I hope you can see that. This, maybe just slide this over a bit here so you can see that. And that's an animation disc here. This uh, is a disc that we would use uh, when, for example, when I worked on Teddy Ruxpin. Now, this is a, a picture I found on online. So it's a, it's a, obviously a very antique wooden wooden metal, uh, disc with a uh, no pegboard, uh, no peg bar in it at the bottom. So you can see the holes that I showed you earlier with the peg uh, holes. And that's uh, standard animation equipment, uh, or, or it was at the time, and it no longer, of course, is. So uh, these pegs would, um, you put your, your one drawing here, you put another piece of paper here, and you would create your next scene or your, um, your in-between scene so from there. So underneath, no, I don't know if you can see it. You can see the light coming through here. Uh, underneath. So if you had a light source, like a bright um, lamp or something, or um, a bulb underneath it, it would it would give you that, um, it would be like a, a lampshade type look. And you could very clearly see the drawings, uh, the, the next uh, layer of drawings underneath that, and you could flip it back and forth. I don't have a, an example of that, but you can check that out um, on YouTube as well. Uh, flipping the the drawings to make you know to kind of give you a like a flip book effect that we spoke about that um a few a uh, little while ago the flip book uh situation i think it was last week okay so let's go back now to the next uh, drawing i have here um this is describes the camera <laughs> this is a really interesting process here the camera now um in the case of Windsor McKay, I believe this is exactly the method they used. He would make all the drawings. They had a camera superimposed above above the um, the level that they were shooting, and they would shoot all the drawings um, from from this pedestal, sh shoot downward, and they would do it one or two frames at a time. I think one or two frames they'd click on your stationary camera. And then they would put all the uh, the images together, and it would you'd get a moving picture, just basically the same, you know, video and, and film <laughs> is the process there. And um, the camera would move up and down. Uh, it um, it 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 would be stationary all the time. The only thing that moved was your table, the thing underneath here. And uh, you can see they it was very technical. And I knew some camera people that I worked with at Teddy Ruxman very technical thing here the table would move north south east west and uh, of course the camera people knew all about this and when you zoomed in you it would be called a truck in shot uh, and this is what uh, what they're showing here in this little drawing and then of course you would have um, a truck in shot here so it would be basically one one two frames you'd zoom in a little bit um, incrementally into the scene and a couple more shots or a couple more uh, frames, do the same the next time, do the same the next time, and you'd be, you know, eventually you'd have this truck-in shot that would look very smooth and very, uh, very nicely done.
And uh, of course the table could be turned around and you could get like, uh, if somebody was knocked out and they were, you know, passing out, they were spinning around, you could get that effect by spinning the tables. So very interesting. And then of course they show a very interesting truck in here where the camera's angling toward the, uh, the, um, toward the castle here. Of course, the camera would stay close or would stay at the same position, but the table would move and have to move incrementally. And it would be, there'd be a lot of um, degrees and, <laughs> and inches and the, everything would be laid out very clearly on it uh, on how to do that. And, and these camera people were, were scientists, uh, as I recall. And uh, so very interesting. But uh, the really neat thing is that today you don't have to worry about this. You just hit the tween button and begin your your beginning and ending scenes. Do your uh, ease in and ease out um, uh, command, and then you're good. Everything works out as you, and you're saving yourself quite a ton of money by doing that. And let's have a look here at the the, the dope sheet, of course. And this was a very this was another very technical thing of animation. It was it was also labor intensive. Um, you'd have it all timed out. Uh, the actions uh, can't. Um, you're, you continued to hand hand under screen, <laughs> grab shovel, hold, uh, anticipate to lift shovel. So your anticipation movements were were all lo logged in your dope sheet too, or your uh, your action sheet, and then <laughs> instructions to label accordingly. You, you always had to do that. The animator had to remember to number his drawings, and and I remember that was couple of times uh, where animators would have to go through all their drawings and renumber them because they were out of sync or something. And that happened. It just was one of those things, but you don't even really have to worry about that now it, um, with the tweens and whatnot. But uh, it's a uh, pretty exciting times we live in that you can do that. Okay. Let's take a look now. So that's my uh, little tutorial on the camera and let's go to finishing touches here. I just did a little, Thing this morning here and I'm just going to un all these drawings here let's get them all off here and there's one left there so uh, this was a little drawing a little animation scene I did recently just to show you um, the, the real meat and potatoes of classical animation and the, what we're going to do today and, and it really is basic stuff it's something that i hope that you'll be able to take the ball and run with it um you know it's it's um so what i did was i had uh the scene where i've got somebody doing a a surprise take like they're they suddenly have a surprise so i started with this first scene which actually this was my what was my first scene here? Uh, but uh, no, sorry, this was my first scene because this this was my pose. So th they go from this scene to um, this scene. So these are the two scenes that we're going by here. Sorry. Uh, how did I do that? So it would be basically from this one here that we're seeing to the, this one up here. Now this, because I've got it in, um, in, if we go to the, oh, let's go back here. Okay, let's start all over again here. So if I go to the uh, wrench tool here uh, and to, uh, I just can't even remember what I did here. <laughs> okay, we're going to video. Now I am lost. I am so lost now. Okay, I can't even remember what I did now. It's it's don't get old folks. It's it's not fun. Uh let's see here. Let's take that off. Okay, what I'm looking for is well, I've already got it here because I've, I can play this here. So this is this is what I'm looking for. So I've got the two extreme movements, very choppy, and because if we take this down, um, this is exactly where I want to be is is here. So if I take this down, we will play it, and then we can have the two extreme movements. So you can see there's a bit of movement there, and I I made an effort to keep the volume similar, 
it's very important to do that. You'll any animator will tell you that that it'll. The reason being is it'll look out as uh, look unusual. It actually looks to me when when it's a little when it's a little imperfect, it looks great. But anyway, I'm not a I'm not a classical animator that's been working for Disney for for seventy years. I <laughs> so I have to say that I I like things imperfect. I I'm a big fan of the Warner Brothers cartoons from the day. So I. Um, there's the two drawings there so we want to get some some movement here so let's take off the uh top one here and we're, we're going to try to get this really quick demonstrative uh scene here so um this will be our opening scene here and we're going to try to move this guy ahead here so he's anticipating that he's going to snap his head back in realization so there's there's our scene two and i'll just zoom in a bit here and i think i've got that highlighted here and i'll just add a bit of uh add a bit of detail here just to give it a little help now i i do note that i'm using a pencil on the on the um, I, Apple Pencil here, and I've got it fairly, fairly thick, like a 6B pencil, which is really soft, and it gives you a nice thick line, a nice thick heavy line, and it's a lot of fun because you can get some good movement in it. So I'm, I'm, it's keeping the drawing nice and loose. I think the one thing I don't like is this arm. I, the arm is uh, bugging me because it's out of um, just a little... Um, a little, uh, the volume changes in it. I'm not liking that too much. I'm going to take a bit of that out in that drawing here. And then I've got it moving a bit up here. So he's he's actually snapping his head downward. So we, we start here where his head's at this level. Then it's popping down a little bit. Now we've got this one here where you notice his back is kind of arching up a bit. That is an anticipation movement that we want to, to give here because um, we want to make sure that it'll look natural for him to throw his head up. So he's kind of beginning the movement upward to give that head movement. So this is really important to, to do this. So we, you've, you'll note here that um, in the, the onion skin drawing, you see beneath here, it's a little lower, but here it's higher and the head is, is a little further down. So this is an anticipation of the next movement. Okay, so uh, let's add these three drawings together here. So you, you'll see the process here. This is this would be um, how you'd see the scene if you had an animation disc and so, a light source underneath it and the three scenes on your pegboard um, to look through. So, so we're going to go from these movements here to... This extreme movement. So this would be your extreme um, pose B, basically. If you were doing a posing, you were um, uh, your your characters up as far as you know, at the, probably the utmost part. And then after that scene, he will be easing into his rest position. So it'll be kind of a quick snap between these two. You'll you'll note like one one or two drawings, you, you wouldn't even do any drawings really between it because it would be would be all um, coming to rest or anticipating. So in this at this point, it's anticipating this snapback movement. You're preparing the body to do that. And then here you have the your extreme snapback. He's gone as far as he's going to go. And the next scene, okay, which is not that one, it's this one here. He's kind of subtly coming to rest here and he will here too and some sweat popping out too which is fun and uh and from here on he'll be doing the um re 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 going to rest so we're what we're going to do here oh and and i forgot to show you the field guide this is what i had to use to to get the scene and keep everything keep all my action within uh, a viewable range and this is another very technical thing that um that classical animation taught us um, it's to, you have to make sure um, everything's placed properly within your frame and uh, including the backgrounds. If you had had one for the scene, which we don't, 
but uh, it all um, all the action should make sense like in a movie uh, you it sh- this is your and, and filmmakers have this too right tom they have we have uh, f- films divided into uh, quadrants so that you can you know you, your action has to fit properly and sensibly within that range so and that's what we do here too so i'll just uh, maybe do this within the that range as well you see the the actions here, the two actions here. So what I'm going to do now is uh, that's all making sense there to me. So I'm going to give you a little uh, glimpse of um, what our character would see. So let's start with these um, these motions here to these four motions here and give, give us a little glimpse here. Maybe um, there we go. So you see it's a little choppy here. He's moving back, but let's maybe slow down the speed here. You can control your frames per second here. Now it's a little choppy though. It's you can add you can add the things to it. So I'm going to show you what adding that one scene here as we go to our layers. The one scene where he's kind of thrusting his back up, his head down. And he's about to snap back. We're going to see the, what a difference this makes. It just makes more sense. It gives it a little more, um, you know, it, he's, uh, he's, he's beginning the movement, his head snapping back like a whip, basically. So that, that's the difference there. And that was just by adding that one, that one drawing really. And, uh, let's go back here again and, uh, we'll, uh, take that out again and we'll show you the difference there we'll play it again between this and this it's it's not bad but it really uh gives a little bit of uh extra snap to do that just that little movement of the back up i tried to keep the volumes similar but uh it's a little off but that's not bad um let's let's uh then follow through with the rest of the movements here and then we'll get the the full the full effect here so we'll get the go back to the start here right to the start and we'll speed it up a bit here because i think that's uh we'll speed up to seven frames a second here let's just zoom in a bit so we have the full screen effect and then you have the, the snap whip, the head whips back, the sweat pouring out of the head. <laughs> and uh, pretty pretty not a bad scene for a whip, something I whipped off the other night. Anyway, I, I thought you'd, I'd like to share that with you. Now, I, I could take a few drawings out of here. I could, um, what I was wanted to tell you is we, uh, in animation, we had to always remember to keep our drawings in sync and keep all the, the numbers correct. And, um, and, and in this particular thing, I have them all, um, layer four, I think that's basically, I, <laughs> it always came up layer four, but, um, I'm just going to call, um, let's see, I should have numbered all these, but let's, let's say I took one of these ones here and put it up, for example, here. And, uh, I'll just show you how awful this is going to look. You're going to, we're going to go back to the start here. It's going to throw the whole thing off. You got like two double takes and they look really unsmooth. And uh, that's not what we want. So we're going to move this guy back down here and um, make sure we don't, don't do that. Or the other thing that um, could happen is if you get um, miss a drawing here, and I'm just going to add a blank layer here somewhere or two. Let's put one. Let's put one in here, too. So what can happen is that you can have a blank layer and, and then bop, bop. <laughs> it doesn't look right. That can happen, too. So you, it's really important when you're doing um, classical animation, make sure your drawings are in the right order and there's no blank pages because, because when the camera department would get them, they would just... Uh, they would just shoot them. So you'd have a couple, <laughs> like rocket Robin hood. When I was a kid, that was uh, something I remembered. They would uh, 
have Rocket Robin Hood talking about pointing at something and his ha- his hand would disappear in the scene. And I remember thinking, did I just see that? How, how could that miss? But that's what happened. The The camera department said, well, that's, that's what our instructions are. We were to shoot this. So really important to keep your drawings in, in sync and, um, and, you know, and you've got to be the camera person. So it's all in, on you really now. So one person is uh, basically the whole, the whole shooting match. So let's uh, have a look at um, the th- next thing I wanted to talk about was line quality. Now we're going to take a look at uh, this particular scene, which looks to me, it's really rough and loose and thick and it's a lot of fun to look at. Um, and I was going to show you the different line quality you can have here. So I, um, so if I take this drawing here, uh, what I had done is like a, a traced it and basically created um, with a thin line, with a thin thick line, or sorry, a thin um, as far as thickness, and uh, just a very basic line, like, if you will. throughout the whole the whole production so you do all these rough drawings first which we showed you and then you have to go over all the drawings again and and have a line like a consistent line that's very important in classical animation and that is that was something when I worked at Atkinson that was very much uh, um, a very important thing and I, and I was in the uh, model and prop department so that was hugely important for me to maintain the, the line quality of the production of all the drawings and the show uh, in that um, in that because I'd been doing like drawings like this pretty much all the way through when I was posing but then suddenly I'm doing the uh, model and prop design having to do final drawings that that looked consistent with the rest of the production and and it took me quite a while to to finally get to that level and but I, you know I worked hard at it and I, I feel I did it um, so here's another one with thicker lines, a thicker, heavier line, much like the, uh, the loose lines there as well. So that's, that might be a different, uh, look, but it, again, it has to be consistent throughout the production. And, and, uh, I presume the people that did the model design would, um, would have already presented a, uh, um, you know, your, your character model and, and would have the line quality already indicated on that of course so uh, so this this might be what you want to do uh, for it and you can and of course I think of uh, when I think of the stipple drawing what I did here I think of um, uh, let's see national film board uh, films which lo- those were done by very talented Canadian animators in the day and uh, had similar looks to this um, this that stipple kind of rough line and then you know they would maybe redo the scene and they'd redraw it and it would be you know in a, in a cycle it would look really cool it would be kind of rippling in the, in the breeze which i always uh, enjoyed a lot and it, you know it, it gave the the drawing or sorry it gave the animation piece quite a bit of life and and uh and what other things could we do here let's uh, let's try to do another drawing here and what i like about this is if you're doing animation it uh, it will take the previous scene and it will give you um, a, um, you know, it'll lighten up your your uh, background scene. So let's take our black line again. Uh, let's uh, kind of take it to, I like value here and I can get a 100% black. I'll take the yellow cyan and uh, magenta down and I will take up the, so we could, um, we could do, let's see. Let's do an airbrush where, where it's a little, we'll thicken that up. We'll bring that up here. We'll just take this the opacity way up and we'll take the brush size down to about three, four percent. And I'll just zoom in here. Now this is, again, this is your, uh, let's take it down even more so here. So this line would, would give it a bit of um, softness. Which could look really good on the final uh, final drawing, too. Trying to keep uh, consistent here, keep the thickness going, the right thickness here. He's got a bit of a chin or a lower lip here that we want to keep. Oops, and we'll just move over our screen here. 
and uh, and the mouth here, which is uh, always fun to draw. To me, it's always fun to draw the face, <laughs> especially comic strip cartooning. I always enjoyed doing the um, drawing part of it. I always thought it was so important, and that you could it could add so much to it. And uh, but for animation, of course, it's the bread and butter. You have to you have to know how to draw. There you go. So that's basically what that would look like. We'll take out that. Uh, yeah, so that could be interesting too. There's there's no end of things you can do, and and you can of course even if you want to add a little shade to it too. That that was something that I remember um, Disney doing, and uh, many of the animation companies, and a lot of the uh, the guys that were independent animators who made big stars of themselves. Like um, uh, oh yeah, there's a, there's a lot of them. Just a little touches like that that gives it a little bit of light source, and you could do that all the way through. It would be uh, it's a little extra work, but look at the effect you get. So, so that's an option too for you. And of course, coloring you could uh, build another layer there and keep that color underneath, and uh, maybe he could have a. I don't know, kind of a, maybe he's a lemon head. I don't know. Just have, have fun. Just have fun creating it. And uh, of course, we'd, we'd have already had model sheets of our character, but if presuming we have the model sheet and we know what he's to look like, we could add all this uh, this really inter interesting stuff later. Here we go. And, and then we could... Uh, There we go. That could be very interesting. Let's play these two scenes here. <laughs> yes, that would be interesting uh, scene there with the uh, very interesting. Um, let's uh, talk about um, a bit about the. So you could take this color actually and put it under any of these other ones as well. Uh, going the uh, step ones, for example. See how it could add something to it and to a lot of uh, work to it and it would look fantastic of course um, you know the thick and thin would look great with that as well um, but uh, for now we have uh, this really neat animation that we're, I think I'm going to show you again and uh, we'll give it a play here There we go. Okay, so um, let's go back to um, what I wanted. I, the other thing I wanted to do was with the field guide here, and that was to um, describe how uh, you could introduce a um, <coughs> how you could lay out a scene basically. With the field guide and it's uh, really amazing how uh the field guide helps you it helps you it's like a director <laughs> it's like a director in front of you and it was something that um we, it was a, a a tool of the trade and when when <laughs> when the uh, the scenes were being uh, viewed in at atkinson's uh the 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 uh i guess the the folks that were um checking the scenes the checkers would say, well, you so and so, did you lose your field guide, <laughs> or did you did you leave it at home, or did you did you eat it for breakfast? Or <laughs> there would always be jokes about that. But uh, it's it's really a, a good thing to have, and and you could um, it will quicken up your work so much. Uh, I would I would recommend it even um, you know uh, animating digitally too. If you do that, your field guide is a 
It's a great tool. You can s sort of center where your, your action is going to be. Uh, you may decide, well, that's too high. So we're going to take this down here. And, and there is a, there is a, um, a rule basically about, um, uh, uh, landscapes and, um, and scenery and, and you should have your, um, I think it's a third of your scene should be, um, and no more than a third of your scene should be your, uh, your landscape or your scene here. So that, that's probably a better place to put it. And, and you can do that very easily on your field guide here. And then, um, then in, add your animation here. Uh, let's put this back up here. This could be the scene that the fellow's doing. And of course we can't show it really with the field guide there, but you can imagine that they would be, you know, a backdrop here and they've got quite a bit of sky here to show against and in a background to show that they're somewhere on earth. <laughs> so um, that's, that was my last point to make here. And uh, so I, I'll leave you with that. And um, I hope that helped. I hope that was, it was much as much fun for you as it was for me. And I will bring uh, the camera back onto me and I will turn it over to Tom. And thank you so much. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, I think we're, we're pretty Sorry, good. Here. Sorry, I'm just getting uh, a. Uh, wanted, wanted to get my sound Scott. back on for you too. Um, no, thank you, Jeff. The, that's uh, fantastic. Um, now, in terms of, uh, I think there's some questions about uh, like adding sound and, and Procreate and stuff. So, what I wanted to recommend, and I think the best way is, is that if you if you do an animated uh, piece um, in Procreate, like Jeff was showing us um, uh, in the previous sessions, that just take that piece and then you can put it into um, into iMovie and we have a tutorial on uh, on iMovie as well. So if you um, um, you know if you, if you if you take it that way, uh, that can really work well. Because I think we had we had some questions from people about you know how how could we make that work, um, and 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 you know to do it that way. Um, so I think you know that's that's your best case scenario. So that if you did your animation, export it, and in Procreate, and then once you have the video file you can then take that video file and put it into something like iMovie and then you'd be able to um, to do the, uh, uh, put it together with sound and, and so on. So you can treat, basically if, if you treat your video, and I, I thought I'd just kind of mention this in terms of the uh, animation process too, is that, you know, if you look at an, an animated film, you still have an editor, you still have sound and so on. So, you know, the, that's once you get into moving images, then you start to look at the, you know, you can do this post-production work. So you can do all that kind of stuff. So the great news is, is if you go right to our website, tvmcs.ca, you can uh, check out the video tutorials on how to do the video work. So if you, if you finish your illustration, your animation, export it out, then you can continue from there. Um, but yeah, there, there isn't, uh, in, in my research, and, and things change and, and software gets updated, uh, I didn't see any way to do it directly in Procreate uh, once you do the animation. Yeah, to add any kind of sound. So if you, that basically if you export it out, then you can work in like, you know, uh, iMovie directly on your iPad. So if you just contain in the iPad, or you can take that sequence, put it into like iCloud, uh, into your cloud uh, data, and then put it into like something like Resolve. So we have tons of workshops uh, available online on our YouTube channel that you will take you through that process. So uh, the, uh, kind of a whole other process. But I think it would be interesting that maybe in the future we can always do a small session on that too, is taking some of the images and then you know, doing the post-production um, and, uh, and do something like that. So I think it's, it would be kind of a cool session that we can maybe combine in an in in-person um, uh, session in, in the future. Um, so let me just, uh, in terms of um, what's going on here, uh, I just wanted to put up Jeff's uh, email and stuff. So if you guys have any questions um, about uh, this session, if you want to share, um, you know, any of your, uh, the work you've been doing and stuff like that, um, you can definitely uh, do that. So here's uh, Jeff's email, jeffwilsonmentorship at gmail.com. So feel free to, you know, send him an email, uh, share what, 
what you've been working on in this animation uh, or in, in previous drawing classes, do that. If you have any questions, uh, you know, tech questions, you know, general comments, creator space questions, you can email me, tom at tbmcs.ca. And that way, um, uh, you know, you'll, you can uh, ask, ask away and we'll do our best to provide some answers or guidance or lead you in the right direction. Um, and I think it's really exciting, uh, this overview of what, you know, taking the uh, traditional um, illustrations and animation and then how do you transform it into, uh, into like uh, video work as well. So um, just in terms of, let's just have a look here. If anybody has any questions, I, I do have the chat uh, open here. I'm looking at it. Uh, send me if you have any questions. We still have a few minutes here. Um, but I think, um, uh, you know, Jeff, I was going to just, maybe I can just ask a couple questions here as, as we're on. Yeah, sure. um, but yeah, so Jeff, just in terms of, uh, um, you know, what, uh, you mentioned some of the, the, the pieces to, to watch or some of the, the processes and stuff. Yeah, sure. would, would you recommend... Uh, um, uh, what else? What else? What other kind of resources? Like, uh, have do you have any uh, uh, favorite books or anything on animation oh, as well that sorry, you could? Yes, I do. Um, yes, the um, Walter Foster books. I think uh, they might still be available uh, on on um, in paper form. I know the last time I saw some of those, I, I've got the whole set here. I purchased a set of them years ago when I was working in animation. Um, so they're by. Um, I can't remember the name of the artist, but anyway, the Walter Foster How to Animate Do Animation, uh, which are big color treasury books, uh, and there there's lots of resources online if you can't get a hold of those um, and about how to animate. Uh, Walter, I think it's Walter Foster, and they were made by Win um, an, a, Preston Blair was a Disney animator who um, worked on those books and and very very good resources, and I would highly recommend those. Um, let's see. And any any animation book that will tell you um, the the technical processes. Um, I think the main ones are are pretty much um, making sure your volumes are staying the same, um, and and that's what every book will tell you. That keep your volumes the same. Keep loose when you're doing your initial drawings, and um, make check your drawings to make sure they're making sense that the, the, the movement, you know, you're not getting jump cuts. That's the term meaning that something is out of sync. And I showed you that in, in here. Um, so um, yeah, just um, there's a lot of stuff available. Yeah. I, I would highly recommend the, the Preston Blair books or anything online you can find on him. And uh, yeah, watch uh, some of the older ones, um, some of the older animations uh, from the comic strip, uh, Days, which were just basic black and white drawings, but they're very well done. And uh, even today, the things uh, they rival anything done by Disney or anybody else because they were um, they were painstakingly produced and 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 quite nice uh, nicely done. And of course, the comic strips were popular, so they were done in black and white. So it doesn't it, it, don't let uh, don't think that because things are not in color that they're not as good. They might be better than anything in color so and there's lots of stuff available Windsor McKay has several videos uh, on YouTube um, that 1914 Gertie the dinosaur had over 10,000 drawings that were done by himself and uh, and the in-betweeners and um, yeah there's um, quite a few um, of the Warner Brother cartoons that I loved uh, from the 40s and 50s probably the heyday for me uh, watching Warner Brothers cartoons they were very uh, very loose, very ridiculously silly. Um, so watch any of those. Um, anything by Tex Avery, anything by Char Charles Chuck Jones, um, I'd highly recommend. Uh, Bob Clampett, there's a whole list of names that you'll you'll come to know if you search those things on YouTube. And YouTube is the greatest resource for, uh, for moving pictures and, and film and TV uh history too if you're history buff like me too you'll you'll just love it so um anyway that would be my recommendation research um as much as you can and um yeah those books are great uh, if you can get them and they might be online versions now too pdfs um i know uh, a lot of people have those available i know oh, a, a friend of mine uh brian lemay has an animation channel that 
and he really gets, uh, he's a really good teacher. I would recommend uh, learning from him. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, that's, I think that's yeah, excellent. Like that there is, you know, resources and, and, um, and I, and I guess I, th I think what's really interesting too, is that, uh, you know, all the concepts are, are nothing really changes. So those core concepts are, uh, are timeless, right. And, and what you've been showing us. Um, and I think, yeah. And I, and I think, so, you know, I think that's the thing is to, uh, you know, to, to continue through and, uh, and like I said, with, um, uh, you know, going into, you can then take the video pieces, you can always do some editing with it, right. And, and kind of, and figure out if there's any adjustments in that scenario as well. But also once you add sound too, um, I think that's a, what, what are your thoughts on sound, Jeff? How important is sound then for the final well, piece? I, I, having worked with you, Tom, I, I, uh, I see sound can really like it can double your your impact of your of your film of your project so uh yeah that's something to keep in mind is that if if you have a um you know we it, we tend to compartmentalize the the whole digital thing and and really sound and and pictures uh do marry very well together so so definitely sounds it's it maybe a bit beyond me but it is something very important to, to consider and um, and I, I've been trying to work in GarageBand and try to figure out how to how to compose things as well. So uh, I'm learning how important it is to um, you know to to keep that in mind that, that this is going to have sound to it later too. So um, yeah, I think it's very important and um, and I it's it's a little beyond me because I've been a you know I'm a dinosaur I'm Gertie the dinosaur I've been doing it my one way the whole my whole life but I'm learning that you if you diversify and you learn other things it'll be it's the world is a better place for it so uh, I highly encourage people to do that and uh, and, and I and I'm not an expert in it so I don't have any more any expertise to offer there but just to uh, if you can do it you're you're better man than I or better person than I. <laughs> No, that's, that's great. And I think it's it's great that you mentioned GarageBand. So I think that's, you know, the fact that the Procreate software is on an iPad. So then you have iMovie, you have GarageBand. So these are all like the apps, the free apps that come with the iPad already. And it, you basically have a recording studio, a whole editing studio and an animation studio that can all be on your iPad. So, you know, and we have a lot of videos on uh, working with sound and GarageBand working with stuff on, directly on the iPad. We're gonna do more of those uh, to come. So do stay tuned for that as well. We're gonna do some more, um, like, you know, what can you do fully on an iPad? Like doing, you know, a full animation, doing a whole sound, doing everything like that. So I think Jeff brings, I'm glad that you mentioned GarageBand. It's a really good, great piece of software to do sound in as well. And then you can, you know, put them together. Um, lots of ways to do it. So yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, thanks again, Jeff. I'll, I'll, I'll end, it, end it there. But if, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pass it back to you just for a final uh, sign off here too. Well, um, bottom line for me is um, we we used to it used to require tens of thousands of dollars to animate a film. Uh, today, it's very affordable. Like uh, I just hope um, we have many new Disney's and Windsor McKay's out there that are that are going to take it on and and try to you know um, just improve the uh, improve things. We um, we've had a tendency to make it too perfect. And I think a little imperfection is, uh, it, it just, we enjoy it more. There's something about the imperfection in the animation that, that I love. And I, uh, um, I just, <laughs> I just know people are out there that, that, that have the, the capabilities and can do it. So I, um, I just hope that in some way I've been small way, I've been able to help. So I just, uh, pass the baton to you and I wish you the best. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Thanks, Jeff. So again, I just want to thank Jeff for this wonderful uh, four-week session. You can re-watch all these sessions right here. And like I said, we're going to be working on some more uh, total iPad uh, workshops, uh, in-person workshops we're planning to start in September. In the meantime, please uh, check out the available iPad resources at our partner libraries. So you can take them out directly there and we've put Procreate uh, software on there. And then there's already iMovie, GarageBand, all those kinds of things. So, uh, you know, really great uh, concepts there. And, and a lot, and you can do a lot of this even just on an iPhone too. Uh, so, you know, they're pretty big now too. But, uh, you know, we'll, we're going to do more of these iPad workshops coming up as well of what you can do. And I think that's the main thing to remember is that, you know, Jeff is demonstrating and illustrating animating on an iPad and it can all be done 
uh, on, a on a tablet surface uh, like that in instead of you don't need a big massive computer or anything so we can achieve a lot in the iPad so that's I think uh, great to you know how everything's been scaled down and what's available so please go and create uh, look at uh, rewatch these and and, and uh, explore your creative possibilities in uh, in animation through uh, illustration and uh, thanks again for joining us in terms of uh, all our partners on this. I just want to thank everyone again, uh, the Canada Council for the Arts, all our library partners where you can access the equipment and all these workshops through the Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library. Thanks for joining us and be sure to sign up for Jeff's next masterclass starting in August. Uh, if this will be uh, next uh, Saturday, we start up and uh, the uh, whiz bang series. So Jeff will be taking us through now that you're illustrating, cartooning, what do you need to do to market that? What do you need to do to, um, you know, to really stand out and, uh, and uh, you know, improve and, and, uh, and work on your, on your style and your, in your marketing uh, as an artist? That's really a, a, a great workshop. I look forward to that as well. So do, do sign up for that if you haven't already. And we'll see you uh, at the next masterclass. Take care and have a great rest of the day.